Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at DraftKings. I've pulled together a model I'm getting a valuation between 16 and 26 billion dollars. I'll walk you through how I get this. I think that this is a very aggressive valuation here, but first let's hop over to the income statement. This is where we're going to forecast out total revenue. So I pulled in their historical numbers here, um, and then just some a couple of historical um, items from the cash flow statement so we can add those into our model. But the big thing we want to look at for forecasting the revenue here, which is the big the big issue here, I think, mostly for um, DraftKings. So monthly unique users, uh, they've grown it from 600,000 to 883,000 in the last, from 2018 to 2020. Then the average revenue per month per user, uh, $31, $51. So that's good. We're getting more revenue per user uh, while users are growing. And then revenue per month per user, uh, that's just going to be multiplication, right? So you can see they're generating $45 million of revenue per month on average from these unique users. Annual revenue, just take that number and multiply by 12. So you can see, and this is their B2C revenue. So they have two business lines, B2C and B2B. B2B is relatively new uh, based off their filings. It's this SB Tech, which is just now fully getting integrated in. Um, and we don't have as many historical. So this happened during the, the SPAC merger. Um, it was... SB Tech, DraftKings, and then the SPAC all merged into one. Um, so they provide the historical financials mostly for DraftKings. So uh, their B2C or their B2B revenue, SB Tech, is uh, about 75 million in 2020, and they don't provide historical that I could find. Um, I mean, this is just a, a tying line to tie back to total revenue, but you can ignore it. Um, that's very small dollars. This would just be like other revenue, I would guess, that would net against. B2B, um, which is SB Tech. And then I have a just a thing here to look at SB Tech revenue as a percent of total revenue. So currently it's 12%. This is just for when we're forecasting out because I don't have enough data to make informed forecasts on this. They don't really provide much historical data. Um, so I've just held it as a total of 12%. But we'll get in here. So first thing we need to do is forecast out average monthly unique players. We can see, you know, it grew 14%, grew 30%. Um, but, you know, there's been a lot of recent wins, I would say, from a legislative perspective, it seems like, for them to be able to operate in more states. So, you know, kept kind of a similar growth rate from 2020 um, and then had it just kind of decrease down to 10% to kind of trail off there. So that gets you to about 3.5 million users by 2030, which, you know, might actually be a low number, might be a high number. Um, you know, I think online gambling is uh, popular among a certain demographic you know, probably like 18 to 40 year old males, I would argue. It's probably that, that demographic. And um, as more places legalize it, you might see more sports betting. And DraftKings is definitely one of the bigger names in the space. So this could be even be a little low. Um, but I still think overall we get an impressive revenue growth rate that might be um, a little bit difficult, but we'll see. And then average revenue, uh, this is the next thing, right? So we look at the growth rate here. Um, it's been growing pretty significantly, but I was looking at this more in a dollar term. So it goes from 31 to 51, so it grows about 10 bucks a year, really, um, is kind of what I'm seeing. So kind of kept it at a similar trend of growing around $10 a year um, until in the later years where we have a trail off, um, just because at $100 a, a month of revenue per customer uh, might be might be high, might be low, honestly. You could look at like a Caesars or something and see if they report kind of monthly revenue. I don't know what other casino companies are public um, and there's a lot of other variables in there. So they might not even break it out, but I feel like, you know, making a hundred dollars a month off a user um, at that point, it's a, it's a line item in a, in a consumer's budget. Um, so that, you know, it starts to become a little bit more than just kind of fun money. Um, if you get too high there. So anyways, with those projections, right, we get them going to about 5 billion in revenue by 2030, up from 540. So this is a pretty healthy growth rate, right? So we have a, you know, they're averaging what, 50, 40, 40, 30, you know, until you get to kind of high teens. Um, and then total revenues, like I said, SB Tech, I've held this so it just stays as 12% of total revenue, um, which is this calculation here. Um, so anyways, total revenue grows 56 and a half percent, you know, which is kind of in line with some of this. Actually, it grew really poorly in 2018, but 2019, you know, 2020, they've done a lot of marketing, but then it, you know, tapers off into uh, low single teens. So that's how we get the revenue projection, which I think is <clears throat> very important for valuing this company. And the next big thing here, right, is COGS, SGNA, and then product and technology. 
So COGS really, I think their margins have to improve. I'm guessing there's, you know, some promotion. Maybe they're giving a lot of promotions to consumers right now. Sign up, get $10 a free bet, something like that that's going into their COGS number. But having this taper back down to where they were in 2018 um, by 2030. SGNA, so this I really looked at. I backed out stock-based comp and transaction-related costs from this. So then this formula here is really you take the SGNA, subtract these out, and then a percent of this on sales. So 90, 83, 82. So it's still very high. So I've set this to 82 here. And I they, they have to scale quickly. And with revenue growing so quickly, um, this has to come down significantly quickly. Um, so I have it going down 10% a year until we get to about 20% and then have it tail off into uh, you know mid, mid to high teens. This is pretty normal, I would say, for a big mature company to have something like this, maybe 20%, just kind of depends, but somewhere in that range. So assuming the, the large stock based comp goes away now that the SPAC is completed and the sponsors took their promote. Uh, the next one is product development. So they call this out. I, mean, I just held it 15% in 2018. Seems reasonable. Keep inventing or keep investing in products. Tax rate, 21%. Obviously, this is just federal tax rate. That could change. Then we get CapEx, left at 2%, not really material. And then this 80%, not really material either. Um, small small numbers, wouldn't worry too much about that. But with these assumptions, if we take a 10% WAC, um, which you know might even be a little low, you could argue maybe this should be like 12% or something, um, 13%. You know, I, I don't know. You can make a lot of arguments there um, of what it should be, but... You know, maybe we'll leave it at 12 here, and then we can we can rebaseline this to 11 to 13, and then terminal growth rate 4%. So I left this a little normally I do 3%. Left this at four just because they are a little bit of a higher growth company, even still at a you know five billion in sales, they might grow a little bit higher um, than kind of the the 3% kind of inflation rate. Um, but yeah, I mean, this gets you the 11 to 17 billion. I definitely think that, you know, you have to really cut costs here in this organization. You know, the revenue is growing and you have to hope at some point that the ability to scale back on your costs is actually going to materialize. If this doesn't materialize, this company is not, not worth anything, um, right? Like if this only scales back 5% a year, your value just it plummets in your cogs if like, Right. If we don't give them like if they're only scaling this back like three percent a year, even. Um, I mean, right, you're, you're down to a five to seven billion dollar valuation. And this is still a pretty healthy growth rates. Um, and then if this if we take this and say it's just going to scale back one percent a year to get back to historical trends. I mean, right, you're four, four billion dollars. Um, so they really have to cut costs really have to control the costs here. Um, and then they have to maintain, you know, a reasonably high paced growth of sales, which I think they could actually beat the sales projections. The question is really gonna come down, can, can they control costs? Um, but yeah, I hope you found this useful or, or informative. Um, leave questions or comments below. And as always, the, the link to download the model is in the description. So please check it out. Uh, thanks for tuning in.